fruit. <clears throat> and what does that make? Ketchup. <clears throat> oh, brother, this guy stinks! Hello, Spirits. DreamWorks has a very good history with their shows. In the animation front, they're badly rendered, but delivered gems solely on their writing. But nowadays, not only do DreamWorks shows not look remotely decent for its age, they're badly written and they're not funny. And out of all the modern DreamWorks shows that actually have hope for being good, I see hope in the Mega Mind show that has been pushed back to 2024. And when you compare it to the nine rounds where they release seasons every few months, it looks promising. I mean, we know nothing of how the show will look, it's, it's basically a gamble, but I've given up on the Nine Realms where their episodes are so stagnant and boring. And it's very clear that this season shares the same issues and again, sticks closer to the classics or rather the original series than developing their own original ideas, no matter how bad they may be. But you'll be here about that in a minute. So without further ado, Drags the Nine Realms Season 6, Classic Desperation. Dragons of Nine Realms Season 6, I can't believe this shit has six seasons, follows Tom, June, D'Angelo, Alex, and Eugene as they try to keep Icarus from Dragons out now that the secret is out, while new and old villains begin to rise. DreamWorks Animation is a great example of how studios can put effort into what they make. Just about every movie, regardless of their quality, they have something original in its style. Usually the frame rate, look or visuals are different. But in this case, they've made a couple new movies like The Bad Guys, Puss and Boots or Ruby Gilman. All movies made in the past two years and yet all look uniquely different than one another. However, <laughs> however, that really only applies to their films, since their shows are so much worse. Think of DreamWorks shows as the director DVD Disney films, but even then I've seen a few of the old shows. The animation quality is unique, but looks abysmal. Awesome. And the writing's really good for a lot of the episodes. Despite its seven episode run having been made for this season, they're all still horrible in quality, and not just the animation. But I'll get to that soon enough. Now an example I can use is Murder Drones by Glitch Productions, an independent animation studio. Murder Drones has really good animation to make scenes either funny, interesting, on purpose tropey, or something horror related. Because whatever the theme of the episode is, that's the tone of the show that benefits its animation style. Because in the end you know what the show is about. The Nine Realms has a multiple set of tones, humour and such that doesn't help with its animation. <laughs> it's choppy, stiff and all in all not eye candy to look at. Which doesn't benefit DreamWorks, especially when it comes to their movies who alongside Sony are taking Disney and Pixar by storm. Even the Dragon 2 throughout the franchise have amazing flight scenes, whether in the films or the shows, but the wings feel so slow and it just shows how bad the animation is. And I can say that the only bit of animation from this show I genuinely enjoyed was over 10 seconds, and that's out of the entire show, and it's from season 6. Since it moves so well enough and then it returned back to the bullshit I'm having to watch every few months. Ironically, Ironically enough, it's the only time that the shield is actually brought back. Now I've touched upon some things about the writing in the past, but mostly just pointing out their poor attempts for humour, which they still do. Now I was surprised that a specific trait from Eugene is still being used from season 4, where he'd hoped he would be the leader, where they focused an entire episode showing Tom being a bad leader so he can try to match up to Hicker. And by the end Eugene still complains and drops it all together throughout the rest of the season. We're forgiving him? How many free passes does this group hand out? And while I will say that the moral is good, that you need to understand the strength of your group, I, I just cannot help but compare this story to another character who tries to match up to their predecessor. Because a theme in a season needs to be concurrent for a character to grow, not to be the same and only have an episode or two every season. To cut in here, in saying that however, I didn't realise that Eugene gets more focus than the others, which is two episodes, but still. And even then, he doesn't change for the rest of the episodes. In episode two, the parents and employees go into leadership training, leaving the writers alone, and making them not let the dragons in the surface or go into the lair. However, Eugene being Eugene brings the dragons out who chase the sheep into the hangar, leaving them trapped. 
However, during his stay in the hangar, D'Angelo expresses concern that he betrayed his dad's trust, leading to a heart-to-heart -heart from Eugene saying how he doesn't have the best relationship with his dad, and doesn't want D'Angelo to ruin what he has with his, so he takes responsibility later on. In episode 4, Eugene expresses to his dragon webmaster, who has fallen under a mystery dragon's venom, that he doesn't have any friends out in the world as he makes it out he does, which was really obvious. His only real friend was webmaster, and while I like that moment, it's it's an immediate turn off when the other episodes are just him being so annoying and arrogant still. He doesn't change and hasn't changed since his debut. And while I would love to applaud the creators for delving more time into the characters for once, after this he still does not change much in personality even after two heart to hearts in one season. But to continue on from my point before about the predecessor story, who is this character though? Miles Morales in Into the Spider-Verse has an entire movie dedicated to him learning to be a different Spider-Man from Peter Parker. Throughout the runtime, everything Miles tries to do is in Peter Parker's image. Wearing a fan costume following the comic backstory to the letter, aka Peter's Leap of Faith, he tries to be someone he can never be because if he can't, there won't be a Spider-Man in his reality due to the death of Peter. And when Peter B tells him that for him to be ready, he has to take a leap of faith. To which every Spider-Man has taken to be a Spider-Man, woman, pig, he understands the control of his abilities, designs his own costume, and takes his leap of faith. That's how you do a matching up to the predecessor story in movie form. For a single season, they could have use that theme for Tom to grow as a leader for the future. Characters grow over time, not overnight, and in that case, overnight is an episode. While I will show a few unfunny clips of the characters to demonstrate its humour, I wanted to touch upon the sparking relationship between Tom and June. Still, after six seasons, they've barely done anything since the last time they poked at the idea. Besides one clip directly touching upon a childhood game they used to play in episode 5, and I mean, it shows that after six seasons, they're forming a crush towards each other, but cries why is it becoming the next miraculous ladybug? A lot of ideas they have during seasons feel like they're throwing things at a wall to see what sticks. And when it does, they're not doing anything with that idea. And don't go telling me that asking someone out is hard, I already know, but you'd think that after six seasons, they'd at least do something more than a few nudges to the audience. Let me just have this moment, as I wear my crown, see me as a friend. Finally, let's delve into the title, or rather how the writers go even further into unoriginality. Before I begin anything, they introduce a Honey I Shrunk the Kids realm, and instead of exploring it for a few episodes, you know, like some of their other episodes had, the writers decide let's make it so there's a massive fucking dragon, and smaller dragon territory so the characters are afraid to explore it, which just feels like they brushed off a realm that is tropey, but a lot more interesting than an elemental realm. But why am I saying this? Well, before we get to watch the juicy stuff of the season, we have the return of another species of dragon from the third film. Let me to reintroduce you to the Death Gripper dragons, the main dragon centered around the third film. Nice to know they're still clinging on to something else from the third film. Hmm. Doesn't help with the animation either. If I was in control of the direction, I feel like the episode could have had a horror element added. Imagine these characters moving in dark areas, snooping around without knowing what they could do. Plus, it's not like they would have to move the dragons a lot anyways, since they're more hidden or in shadows. And I mean, it wouldn't make up the show since there's so much wrong still, but they really need to utilize these dragons better, or you know, increase the animation budgets. Because then you have the first episode, where they reintroduce the return of deadly natters, and that dragons are afraid of eels. I actually forgot about that during this entire series. Which was used to prevent an outbreak of dragons, but they also use fake snakes for it. And that was within the first 15 minutes. Then at 20 minutes, they had the inclusion of something from the second film. Remember when Toothless became an alpha? You know where this is going. When Tom is comet When Tom is co- when Tom is cornered by three deadly natters, Thunder steps up and commands to stop, which makes him look like he was supercharged. To which Tom blatantly says to Thunder, or rather to the audience, There were three of them and you just went like full alpha. <laughs> and while it's bad enough they're treading old ground again, just with every single little thing they introduce throughout the show, they drop it. And they don't bring it up again until a season or two has passed. Not to his friends or even to his goddamn dragon. Like, didn't you literally go through a similar situation before? I can't wait to see how he will become an alpha so I can compare how bad it will be to Toothless's. <laughs> How 
about the villains? Well, let's just say that there's now two dragon knowing villains in this show, and just that there's six to eight episodes a fucking season, which is not enough time to have multiple villains, but I'll go more into that in a second. Now, while this season miraculously doesn't focus on any hiccup artifacts, because it's clear they're not to be trusted with them, how do you drop the Viking helmet and destroy Hiccup's prosthetic leg? And it shows when talking about Leonard again, but during the sixth episode, he learns of the Dragon Book by his lackeys, who have Gronkles, a means of escape, and yet still work for him? Didn't you two find him insane a few seasons ago? Basically, Thunder is poisoned and in turn for the antidote, Tom has to hand in the book. This leads him to look into why hobgoblins are immune to poison, to which they find a flower. Plot twist, the flower doesn't actually work. <laughs> and Tom hands in the book, to which he's betrayed by Leonard. And during that time, it's discovered the grubs on the flowers cause the antidote. Which, hiccup. As much as I'd love to defend you during this show, why didn't you put the bugs on the page with the flowers? It just smells of plot convenience once again for the show to further Leonard's delusion he's the King of Dragons. Speaking of, upon having the book of course, the page it turned to after he threw it was... of Dagger. And that was such a surprise to me if you couldn't tell. Previously on Experimental. But they set up a future antagonist of the show. An amazing, well thought, it's their bootleg Ren edition of Dagger. But why don't we move the spotlight onto the other villain? Now, Slidekin, or Concert Art Sombra, has been established as a villain early on in the show. Even if it wasn't a major threat, she was more of a nuisance to Tom's mother and a danger to discovering the dragon world. However, in season 6, that changes a lot. Now, Season 6 obviously opens up the dragon world to Icarus, or whatever the town name is. She's basically collecting resources, even if it hurts the environment, hurts or angers the dragons, etc. Oh, and we actually were given an in-universe reason as to what Dragon Sight actually is. Which, uh... It produces oxygen. Now explain why the realms act like TARDISes. And it was through the episodes she was in, after being put in suspension for blowing holes into the realm, she tunnels her house into the realm just to get more dragon sight. And that's only revealed after she blows up a cave to get more, which almost suffocates the dragon riders. To cut in again, they're also saved by the cavern crasher, who was introduced earlier on, who I didn't realise came from Race to the Edge, which further adds to my point that they're desperate by adding classic dragons with no sort of evolution being added to them at all, and had planned to play innocent when she would hear the news. However, I didn't really care about her as much, but rather it's someone connected to her. Her grunt, Linda. She is a comedic relief character, the butt of a joke, the main cause for some issues through the show. She was literally the issue for like, season 5's finale. <laughs> but my biggest hate towards the character this season is, why is she against the writers? Like, out of everyone, I thought she'd defend them. Because if it wasn't for Tom, she would be dead at the bottom of the fissure. Like in the very first episode, Tom saves her life. And yet Linda can't remember that. How do they make henchmen that make no sense being henchmen, besides budgetary restraints? It's not like they're being blackmailed. Slake and Leonard will not work as villains because the seasons are short. There's at the very minimum 10 episodes which allowed for more villains and other dragons. Elven, Dagger, Mildew, and that's just the first two shows. Other villains would be introduced in Race to the Edge, aka Vigo, which is a show with a unique storyline that uses its past episodes to tell an original story. Finally, after six full seasons, 35 episodes later, they finally give June and May some time to finally mend their relationship, to finally restore their relationship as mother and daughter, and to make their family whole again. To end this arc in their show after so long is what I would be saying if they actually did. In the opening scene, June wants to show that the dragons are based on legends, and wants to be the advisor when learning more about the dragons. Because through the show, we were shown how May views dragons and her daughter's beliefs are beneath her. However, after the dragons are brought to light, it now just relies on what May thinks of them now that they're real. Well, June presents this to her friends, then fumbles the bag with her mother. Who's got what it takes? You've got what it takes! <laughs> yeah! And you think May and June would try to reconnect to one another through the episode, but uh... No, uh, she, she doesn't appear for another 17 minutes. May's there at the start, 
than at the end. But hey, at least they're acknowledging it, but it's not a great storytelling if you don't focus more on the characters. And yeah, that's it, because they instead use it as a setup for Slutkin as an antagonist. The other tidbit of information about the Wongs is that the kids like the opposite parent they're placed with. Eugene prefers his mum and has a distant connection with his dad. June prefers her father, but they still never focus on who the father is, which may make it easier to see why June prefers him and Eugene doesn't, considering they only said that he likes Miss like June. And yeah. Alright, since the show won't try something new, let's try something more constructive. Now, if this show was any better, I think they could delve into some serious topics that are beginning to slowly get integrated into media. Or if they treat this like a kid's show, maybe I should use one to compare it. Bluey? We've all heard of Bluey, and everything about this show, in its less than 10 minute runtimes, they are able to encapsulate so many things better than anything the Nine Realms wrote. Without going into anything specific, you haven't heard of already. They touched upon death, miscarriage, infertility, abandonment, split custody, and so much more. Because while it's displayed as a kid's show, it's writing and themes is something to be applauded for. They're trying to mend a mother-daughter relationship for six goddamn seasons, and it took six fucking seasons for them to start fixing it. And even then, she still barely has speaking roles. They had a brief mention of Tom's dad, both June and Eugene, liking their other parent better than the other. And these are serious topics that center around a majority of kids and teens today. Parents leave, split off, and it sucks they don't do something with it because instead of constant hate, they could be praised if they had competent writers. Because then we get a majority of the season where the kids almost die around one, two, or even three times in the span of seven episodes. Tom almost dies to deadly natters, Eugene almost dies to his own dragon and death grippers. Then they almost die from a cave-in, and then finally Tom almost drowns. And D'Angelo and June almost die in the water from a shell fire, which was also taken from the original shows. And if this show took itself seriously, they would show that how these experiences have traumatized them in a way to further grow them as tolerable characters. But no, they focus on the King of Dragons with their confirmed dagger ripoff as an even bigger villain for season 7. Just Show and my god. Dragons and Eye Round Season 6 has been constant proof that a show will not improve. While a lot of shows can improve as the seasons go by, regardless of their age rating, the writers behind these shows have a story set out but it's so spread out it's hard to tell when they're trying to show it. If I could recommend something like I often do with these videos, instead of wasting two and a half hours of your life watching this show, like I have, instead watch other stuff. If it's something recent, I recommend stuff like Bluey, Nimona, Hell of a Boss, Across the Spider-Verse, Lackadaisy, Monkey Wrench. If you're looking for things more nostalgic, Transformers Prime, Spectacular Spider-Man, The Looney Tunes Show, Teen Titan, or uniquely different stuff that are far better in comparison, Spirit out.